Hi, my name is Days Lee, and I'm an unexpected speaker. I wasn't expecting to talk. Um, but uh, I'm a freelance writer, and I'm an author. And I write mostly about the Montreal Chinese community. I'm, my father was a head taxpayer, so all my stories kind of take place or have a part of it in that period of time. And uh, my mother came over after the war, and they were separated for 10 years because, of course, he, he couldn't bring her over because, uh, because of the Exclusion Act. But um, my father opened up a restaurant in the 1950s, and he brought my mother over, and it was called Lee's Gardens on Park Avenue. So I grew up basically in the restaurant. So um, my father's generation then was all the uh, head taxpayers, and there were the, uh, I guess you know the term bachelors? They were all the married men here, but they were single here, but they were married in China. And so they were all my father's friends, and they didn't have wives. The women, if they did have wives, the women walked 10 paces behind them. And so um, I grew up in the period here in the 60s when people didn't know much about the Chinese people. And uh, there wasn't, uh, China was still mysterious. And, and uh, there were all these stereotypes I, I, that I know you've all heard of. And I kind of, I kind of think I got into writing because I always want to say, that's not us. We're not those stereotypes. And um, people were thinking like, um, you know, Chinese people, like we're like Charlie Chan. <laughs> you know, that wasn't so bad. He was a smart character. I liked him. But um, they were, they just had all these, these uh, c uh, conceptions about what Chinese people were, that Chinese people can only work in a restaurant, um, hand laundry, or a grocery store. So, and um, I always want to say that's not us, but I, I couldn't say it then. I was a kid. I didn't know how to say it. So um, as an adult, I figured it out. So I'm, I'm a writer. And um, one of the things I did was, um, well, a lot of things I do in my stories is I write, I write about the Chinese community as I see it. And a lot of, a lot of bits and pieces of my life are in the story. Like uh, my first published book, it was a children's picture book, and it's called The Fragrant Garden. And it's about a little girl who works in her family's restaurant. And um, I wrote about it and because what I saw in, as a kid in the restaurant was... Uh, it was a family restaurant. I mean, my brother and my sister worked there. My parents were there. They, we all pr basically lived there. But all the employees were also uh, like family. And, um, but these guys were bachelors. And, and um, I remember my father had hired a cook, and he lived in our basement. Because when you hired someone, they had nowhere else to go. So my father rented out the basement for him until he had in saved up enough money to get an apartment on his own. And this, you did this because the community was your family, because uh, a lot of these men had nobody else here. So you helped each other out. So in my book, uh, The Fragrant Garden, that's how I wrote the story, because that's how I saw everybody that was in my father's restaurant. And uh, there was, like people would come into the restaurant, uh, non-Chinese people, and it was the first time they had Chinese food, and it was chicken sugai and fried rice, you know? <laughs> and that was real Chinese food. And you know what? I thought it was real Chinese food, and the biggest shock of my life was when my parents told me that was not real Chinese food. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, but I love butterfly shrimps. What am I going to do? And that's when I really start to question my identity. I said, I got to find out who we are. And, uh, and so like, people would come in and they would be uh, amazed at this Chinese food. And, and then they, would, they didn't know anything about the Chinese culture. They said, oh, you're so mysterious and inscrutable. And I would say, yes, you don't know what we really think about you. <laughs> but... <laughs> But it was. But I wrote the story at the Fragrant Garden, and it was. It was like because the restaurant was like a family. I mean, the people worked there for a long time, and if uh, someone needed a job, my father hired, would hire him as a waiter and, until he found something better. Or if he didn't want to, he. It, it's people in the community did that, you know, because you had to support each other because you couldn't you couldn't get a job anywhere else except in the Chinese community. Um, so um, some of my other stories, uh, I've also published some short stories. Like, uh, there's a story called The, the War uh, Warrior Women, in which case it's based on something I remember about my mother. And um, the restaurant, my dad's restaurant, was next door to a Greek theater on Park Avenue. They showed Greek movies. But one time in the summer, one year, they showed Chinese movies. They were trying to get the Chinese community there. So my mother got all excited. And she says, we have to go see a Chinese movie. Except it was in Mandarin. Neither of us spoke Mandarin. We spoke Toy San, and I had no <laughs> clue. And then my mother, there were Chinese words on the bottom. And I asked my mother, can you read? She says, no. <laughs> so we just sat there and just watched it. But it was my first, it was my first Kung Fu movie. I thought, wow, that's us. <laughs> you know? We can fly through the air. We can like, you know, run up walls. Like, that was my first you know, concept of what a real Chinese person was, because we didn't eat butterfly shrimps apparently. So, 
So I, I, when my short story, it's, it's not quite like that, but it was based on that. And it was, it's, it's basically like I saw my mother, I think my mother liked, liked it because it was, I don't know, she, I don't think she actually saw these movies in China, okay, because I don't think they had any kind of theater or t there was no TV there. But I think she just, it just reminded her because it was the countryside and, and all that. And um, so it's, it's, so as a writer, um, it's, I, it's a bit of me. They always say, write what you know. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what I do. So, and I recently, I've just published, so I have a children's picture book and I recently published, uh, uh, self-published a, a young adult novel called Guitar Hero. And um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm trying to link the, the experience because I went through the shock of, oh my God, I'm not Chinese. And I always wonder about the identities, like what everyone else is talking about tonight. So um, my, but my always have one foot back in the uh, the uh, head tax thing, and so <laughs> which is a problem because then the people start getting really old, you know. The stories I wrote ten years ago, they were in their seventies. Now they got to be in their eighties because the time is passing by. But uh, it's it's I like to show the generation because even though um, my father's passed away, my parents have passed away a long time ago, and um, I got to stop now. <laughs> so, but um, but my nieces and nephews are fascinated by the head tax thing. So I think it's that period of history will always be a part of the uh, Chinese in Canada, because they're the ones who created Chinatown, and basically the Chinese the Chinese culture that we know in Canada started with them. So thank you. <laughs>